I think there's a lot we could be doing to support students to understand trauma as um, an inescapable part of life, as just something that occurs to us as, as humans. A lot of our schooling now is still very focused on uh, cognitive and physical education, um, you know, at the expense of emotional and spiritual education. Uh, and I think that um, bringing, you know, socio-emotional learning into the classroom uh, paired with a discourse and conversation around trauma would probably do our kids a lot of good. You know, we've created this culture of childhood that sometimes involves bubble wrap, but I think it's really important to have some frank conversations with our kids in a good way at the appropriate level about trauma. Um, and they surprise us consistently when we, when we support them to, to navigate complex things. Um, and they support each other. So I think that it starts with, um, with a conversation. Mm -hmm. To actually explain to them what's happening in their body, you know, bring awareness to heart rate, stomach pain, shallow breath, um, f those feelings of panic and invite students to be present with that in the body and say when you feel like that you're only using about 15% of your brain. So when you make choices with about 15% of your brain you're, you're really likely to make poor choices. So before you respond, before you react, let's invite the rest of your brain into the process. So invite, you know, pr have grounding practices, deep breathing, um, going for walks, moving, moving your energy through your body, and bring yourself to a calm state before responding to a stressful event. And those few students that are the most acutely, if they have that understanding and that, and that language, it's amazing to see how they can respond and witness and hold space for others when their peers are in distress. And it's, it's a empowering approach because it takes the responsibility away from them in a way it helps them to think oh i'm just not screwed up and i just it's not that i'm just doing all these stupid things but there's a reason and it comes from a place and it wasn't just me it's the whole system and structure and history and land and ancestors and it all contributes to what's happening in my body now and it's not my fault but the strategy of inviting students to have soft hearts is really important. And if a student will cry with you and find their tears and soften their heart, that's where the real work happens in trauma-informed practice. So never shy away from a student crying, actually celebrate it and thank them for bringing their tears and sharing their tears because that's a powerful and profound place of growth. And when a student doesn't cry and doesn't have tears, when they should, it's a much bigger job. Once everybody is under the same understanding of what it looks like, um, it is then easily be able to then refer out, find um, resources and referral agencies that can provide that specific care to those youth and then come in and provide that care, which we're seeing pretty effective results with. Um, and then looking at those kids that have overcome these traumatic experiences and then making them become and feel empowered to take their experience and spread the word and spread the knowledge to other kids. Um, so whether that means peer mentorship, whether that means partnering people up, um, doing group work and having kids come in and speak, um, looking at ways to really get children empowered and speaking about their experience and how they've overcome that experience through the counselling and the support provided by either the school or secondary agencies. I think it all comes down to recognizing that at the end of the day there is no real hate, there is no bad child, there is no, those, those things just don't exist. It's fear or love. You're acting out of fear, you're acting out of love. Or if they have a, a, some sort of cognitive disorder or learning disability, again it's fear of failure, like they're acting out because they're hurting. And as soon as we take a step away from that and towards surrounding them with love and finding positive consequences and giving them opportunities to grow, then we'll have a much better way of dealing with these things in schools.